So let's stick with the East African corridor because the East African Association two days ago announced the appointment of Agnes Jital, the managing partner at GBS Africa, as the new executive director in charge of UK and Europe. The Eastern Africa Association looks to support members in trade and investment services across the Eastern African corridor and beyond. Agnes Jital joins me now uh, on the show to speak to the East African economic business and investment scenario from the diaspora perspective. It's great having you on the show tonight, madam, and congratulations on your appointment, which was announced just about 48 hours ago. But let's hit the ground running. Tell me more about the Eastern Africa Association, in which you're now the executive director for UK and Europe. What does it really look to achieve? Thank you very much, Boston, and thank you for picking this story. So the Eastern African Association was founded in 1964 uh, with the sole purpose to support businesses uh, operating in the region, um, advocating for a conducive environment for doing business. And they've been doing this for over 60 years now. So it's great to have a Kenyan uh, running um, the operations from London. So I'm really excited and looking forward to working alongside incredible members of the board who led by uh, Lord Valentine and working closely with my colleagues in the region, uh, the regional director um, in Nairobi, Nikhil Hera. So it's, it's a great opportunity and a great honor for me to serve such a historic, um, uh, such an organization with great history of managing and supporting businesses operating in East Africa. Very interesting. Uh, I just love you folks in East Africa, by the way, because again, you folks are really integrated. But uh, let me ask you, what, in what key areas is the Eastern African Association looking to support further uh, economic business uh, and markets and investments in East Africa? Uh, sitting then in the UK, some of your colleagues across the entire European uh, region, how are you supporting the whole integration and investment and in businesses back at home? The advantage that the Eastern African region has is, is the fact that the market is mostly private sector led. So governments across the Eastern African uh, region have in the past or continuously listened to private sector. We, this is clearly seen by heads of state hosting private sector briefing where they want to understand how what are some of the issues the businesses face. So as an association and what sets, up, sets us apart from various industry bodies is the fact that we work very closely with the private sector but at the same time with the, Afri the east african government and one of the areas we focus on is really understanding the priority sectors for the eastern african uh, government what are their develop development priority sectors and based on that then we inform our members uh, so the eastern african organization i dare say it's a membership organization we 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 make sure that they have this access to information on what priority these governments are setting apart in terms of development and they can plan their investment based on this and i think that's what sets us apart and we look at the, the decision look at itself as a partner of development in in the eastern african region well east africa is considered the most economically integrated region in africa what more needs to be done, uh, Agnes. Are there issues to be uh, clarified and to be done? We talk about investment, uh, better customs and trade tariffs and issues of that nature. Is everybody working from the same page now that you're even extending or expanding the scope of East African region to the big folks in, in, in Central Africa, such as DR Congo? So, you know, the East African integration story, again, is led by the market. So businesses want to expand. So business in Kenya want to expand to DRC to Tanzania and further to 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 Rwanda, Burundi, and elsewhere. Right. Um, so some of the, of course it's never easy. It's, it's it hasn't been an easy journey. But I think the conversation and I think that's where the Eastern African Association plays a great role is to continually have communication with the policymakers advising them on what works for us and what areas um, private sector will require support, um, but also that our businesses see scale, see value in larger and bigger markets with the Eastern African region brings. And we still are a long way to go, Boston. It's a working process, but I think the conversation between 
between the private sector and 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 government has been one of the one of the key advantages uh, which has contributed to an integrated region. Okay, so here we go about integration with the DR Congo coming out. What's your outlook? Uh, uh, on, in terms of that development, it, from all indications, it's not going to be only DR Congo, I'm sure. Other countries would want to join East Africa, uh, gradually becoming the largest block in terms of economy, business, uh, and investment and trade, including the financial markets, with uh, KCB Bank looking at stepping into Ethiopia, uh, and, and, and Equity Bank and others are taking a very big position in DR Congo, in Kinshasa right now, in terms of getting integrated, I and M Bank and a few others. So, uh, do you see more of this being part of what you will be handling? Uh, what advice will you be giving based on the fact that you, what you're doing already at uh, GBS Africa, how does that translate and work in tandem with your new position as the Executive Director at the East African Association, the EA? So my role will focus mostly on market insights. Uh, how does the how, how does the market look like? What are the opportunities for investment? What are the opportunities for governments in terms of rolling investment into the region? Um, but yes, there is there is um, the outlook for the region is positive. The, according to the uh, the AFDB report that just been released there. East African outlook. Um, the region is likely to grow at about four percent. Obviously, this is way behind our projection for, uh, from last year. Um, but priorities again fo will focus on investing in infrastructure, uh, building our financial services sector, making sure there is access. There is there is it's. For businesses, particularly the businesses we, re we represent, uh, that there is a conducive environment to operate, but also predictable tax, uh, tax regimes. Businesses want to understand that they can take the contract to the bank, right? That the government will not constantly keep moving the goalposts. So that's, that, that gives the businesses some form of uh, credibility, but also predictability in terms of uh, planning. Uh, the other areas that uh, the association will support is really being that voice, really working with governments, making the government understand that if you're going to create jobs, you really need to make it possible. You, need, you really need to create that environment for the private sector to create that job and really supporting them to understand how to, to uh, address some of the barriers that businesses face in this region. And it's really, my role will be just really overseeing this member relation, ensuring there is conducive conversation between government and private sector. At the same time, really rolling investment into our region, encouraging more businesses, uh, not only in Europe and, and, and the UK, but encouraging more businesses, including regional businesses, encouraging them to invest in, in in east africa and also guiding them you know step by step what do you require to enter the eastern african markets and and that's what i look forward to doing that and i think it's very much aligned mm. with what we do with gbs africa so the market entry advisory um and also on political and economic risk intelligence so that businesses are able to plan beyond they're able to plan and invest in east africa I'm going to ask you a final question, Agnes, but I'm, I'm not going to wait for your answer. It's just a question. So you've got former U.S. President Barack Obama uh, with links to Kenya. Now you've got Richard Sunak, the new prime minister in the U.K., uh, with a bit of a tie to East Africa, Kenya as well. What is it with you folks? What is the, what's the magic? Uh, with you folks who are Kenyans and East Africa. I'll leave it at that for tonight. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your appointment. Have a pleasant weekend. <laughs>